And last up for uh, Wave 16, we have the USS Dauntless. It's a very interesting ship. Uh, nice addition to the uh, Independence. And uh, we'll get right in and take a look. Here we have our Dauntless class dial. Kind of a terrible picture of the ship. They always try to use ones out of the show. There's our Dauntless class. Kind of an interesting dial. No reverse whatsoever on these. Black in the one tight turns all the way up to a five forward. So reason respectable speed. Somewhat maneuverable. Missing those tight uh, hard turns, but you can live without them. A lot of ships don't have them. And there we have our named USS Donalus. Two attack, two agility, four hull, five shield. Very nice. Four tech slots, which is really nice for 26 points. We have a basic target lock, scan, and battle station. And our named ability is each time you perform an action or use an ability that, or on any of your tech upgrades, place a mission token on this card. During the roll attack dice step, you may spend up to two of these tokens to gain plus one attack die for that attack for each of the tokens spent. Very nice on a ship that's got four tech slots to basically uh, really bump that up. We have our generic Dauntless class ship. Which I still think should be unique. There, there was like a one-of-a-kind ship. You're losing one shield and one of your tech upgrades for 24 points. For captains, we have Arturus. Captain skill of three. One t uh, elite talent for five points. Arturus' is captain skill is plus five if he's assigned to the Dauntless class ship. And he does come with tokens with a captain skill of three as well as a captain skill of eight to represent that. As an action, target a ship at range 2 to 3. Disable either the captain card or up to two crew upgrades on the target ship of your choice. Place an auxiliary power token beside your ship. An interesting ability to disable captains. Nice way to take out those captain skill 9 or higher now that we have all these things that boost captain skill up. But uh, definitely more useful on this ship with the captain skill of 8 himself. There you can see both the Captain Skill 8 and uh, 3 tokens for our tourists. For our Elite Talents, we have Emergency Shutdown for 3 points. During the activation phase, before you move, you may discard this card to disregard your chosen maneuver and not move. If you do so, you lose your Perform Action Step for the round. One of only 2 cards in the entire game that lets you basically make a uh, full stop maneuver. Definitely useful in certain situations. The fact that you lose your action step for the round kind of hurts, but uh, definitely could be useful in uh, certain situations. The fact that it's a discard really hurts it more than anything. Next we have Lure. Five points. During the planning phase, after all ships have chosen their maneuvers, you may discard this card to target an enemy ship that's not within range 1 to 3 of your ship. If you do this, change that ship's chosen maneuver. Target ship cannot look at or change their dial after you reset it. If the new maneuver would cause the ship to exit the play area or overlap another ship, that target ship may disregard the maneuver and not move that turn. Seen a couple interesting combos with this. The fact that it specifically states you can't move someone off the board with this specific maneuver kind of limits it. Although there's a bunch of other cards that you can combine it with, and there's a lot of conversations going on the Board Game Geek forums about that, that basically use this in conjunction with another one, and right off the bat you can almost turn somebody around and fly them right off the board. As long as you use this one first, because you can't use this one specifically to make them fly off the board, but the other one you can. So, not going to go into that one because I think it's a really cheesy combo, but definitely are combos out there where this could be useful. In the least, you can use it in the uh, midst of a battle to turn somebody into a weapon arc or into a minefield or something along those lines as well. The ship comes with a ton of tech upgrades. First one we have here is Auto Navigation for two points. Adds another tech upgrade slot to your bar, which is nice. While this card is assigned to your ship, you do not need to have a captain card assigned to your ship. 
your ship has a uh, skill, uh, uh, captain skill number of two. When you reveal your chosen maneuver, you may disable this card to change that maneuver to any green maneuver on your ship's dial. Always nice to be able to change after you've seen what your enemies are uh, planning. And then it comes with uh, captain tokens with the two. The big thing is that it says you do not need to have a captain. So you can have this and a captain and then in, say something should happen to your captain. The auto navigation can take over and kick in as a captain skill of two. Meaning that you're not going to be going last. But it also gives you a backup to your uh, your captain should he fail. It still doesn't drop you down to a one. Next we have force field for three points. Interesting typo on that one. But if an enemy ship causes one of your upgrades to be disabled or discarded, you may disable this card to roll one defense die. If you roll an evasive result, the target upgrade is not discarded or disabled. It costs five extra points for any ship other than the Dauntless class ship. This very first sentence, if an enemy ship causes one of your upgrades is to be disabled. One extra word in there, guys. Anyway, nice way to possibly protect a crew. Three points is a little steep. If you're running an upgrade heavy ship, though, might be worth it just for that chance that you're making your opponent waste one of their abilities if you do roll that evasive. Next, we have navigational deflector for four points. When taking damage this round, you may discard this card to cancel one damage result. If the damage is from a minefield or obstacle, disable this card instead of discarding it. You may roll defense dice against obstacles or minefields. No ship can be equipped with more than one navigational deflector. I believe there have been a similar card to this before, but the ability to be able to roll defense dice against minefields is really nice. This ship already has two dice, so it really helps. The fact that it's also canceling one is uh, definitely helping you out against uh, minefields that seem to be pretty popular nowadays. Next, we have Particle Synthesis for five points. As an action, you can disable this card and discard one of your tech upgrades to repair either one damage to your hull or two of your shield tokens. It can only be purchased for the Dauntless class ship. Nice ability. The fact that it's reusable makes it okay. The fact that you have to discard an upgrade to uh, do it kind of hurts. Nice way to get rid of a crit. Definitely has its uses on a ship that's really tech heavy like this one. You're going to have the upgrades to spare. It all comes down to really whether you want to, to sacrifice the upgrades or not. Next we have power distribution grid for two points. During the activation phase, before you move, you may discard this card to disregard your chosen maneuver and perform one of your left or right turn maneuvers on your maneuver dial instead. Treat it as a red maneuver. Uh, the only this ship has the two and threes. The threes are already red, so if you end up going that route, you're not actually changing anything. So interesting, the fact that it's a discard to use, kind of iffy. It's only two points, but. There's definitely better tech upgrades you can take out there. Next we have the Quantum Slipstream Drive for 6 points. If you reveal a maneuver with a speed of 5 or greater, before performing the maneuver you may discard this card to remove the ship from the play area and discard all tokens from beside it except for auxiliary power tokens. Then immediately place it back in the play area but not within range 1 to 3 of any other ship. You cannot attack during the round you use this ability. Very similar to the um, abilities that the Borg and the Bio ships have. Useful for getting out of a bad situation, getting yourself where you need to be on the board. Uh, I see a lot of people using this on um, either a early game to get to an objective quickly or late game to get away so that they can use some other ability to repair themselves or regrip their ships. For everything else, uh, you got your five shield tokens here. You have your battle station, scan, and evasive token. You have a couple of disabled tokens for your various upgrades. Auxiliary and critical tokens. Target lock T2. You have your dual tokens for the captain here because his skill changes. And you have the captain tokens for the auto navigation unit. The uh, mission this time around is revenge. Gonna guess it's from the episode of Voyager where this ship actually showed up. 
I wasn't a huge fan of Voyager, so I remember the ship was in that, but I couldn't tell you pretty much anything about it after that. You have uh, special roles for kidnapped crew, rescuing your crew, the quantum slipstream drive, and entering Borg space, so that's always fun. And then your various objectives on the end there. Non-lethal attacks. Anyway, always having more missions is a good thing. Someday I will get around to playing them all. For the model, it's definitely an interesting one. guess it looks like it did in the show, so you can't really complain about that. It has lots of the, the detailed panel working and stuff that, again, need paint to, to really make them stand out. Surprising amount of detail on the bottom, actually. Except for the uh, deflector array, they kind of cheesed out on that and just went with a, a painted area instead of like an intake like it should actually have. Pretty solid little thing. The uh, nacelles don't stick down far enough to actually see from the front which is kind of weird. An interesting ship design needs a little bit of paint as with all the others to make anything really look good on it. There we have our Dauntless base, 90 degree front arc, no rear arc, in the generic Dauntless class with the same. Overall it's an interesting expansion, it's a uh, support ship dream here with the four tech slots and there's even upgrades that give you more tech slots. I think there's some captains out there that will give you a couple extra slots so you can really bulk this thing up on support abilities. The Name ship's ability can actually boost your attack up to something quite respectable. Combined with all your various tech upgrades that you're going to have on board. Definitely have lots of options for what you can do. There's a lot of different uses out there for lure. Already seeing some really sick combos for that. Definitely a handful of interesting cards in here. Independence get all sorts of nifty new things out of this if you're playing cross faction There's a handful of good stuff in here, especially if you like to run those support ships Most of your Federation ships tend to be a little light on tech upgrades There's definitely options out there to get you tech slots to use some of these abilities and um, Can do some very interesting things with them Is it a must-have ship if you're playing competitively? Possibly, if for nothing else, than the combos that you can pull with Lure. Other than that, it's more just a, a fun ship. I can see lots of little scenario type things and, and casual play uses for it to have a, a lot of fun. But uh, other than that, it's really up to a personal preference thing. Definitely some interesting options here, though, for whatever faction you're playing. Anyway, that's it for this one, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.